with all due respect. <laughs>
for that weekend day. Mm -hmm. So I can go over just a little bit. I'm not eating in too much of a deficit that I feel it just enough where it doesn't really, I mean, any, if I go off track, I'm not going to gain any weight. Isn't that the benefit of tracking though? You know, you can mm -hmm. manage it, right? Yep. As I tell people, the benefit of tracking your food is that you can manage it. So you can be mm -hmm. a little more lenient and, and hit your, I mean, I'm a big, not an ideological person at all in anything in my life. Right. Um, but I do like the concept of flexible dieting is probably yeah. one of the most realistic concepts out there from yeah. uh, living your day without being miserable, right? Um, getting into the day, today's episode is going to be some, I haven't titled it yet because we're shooting it right now, but it's going to be, it's going <laughs> to be live in action. Li yeah. You're getting your, one thing you're going to get from me and gray is authenticity. Y'all I can promise you that. Right. Um, it's going to be titled somewhere along the lines of, uh, real life issues with real life clients and what everybody's seeing and what our solutions are and what we're doing. We hope that you watch this and you realize that if you have a struggle with something in your nutrition or your workout or your wellness or fitness plan, that you are not alone. We're going to give you examples of real life people that we work with daily on the regular. And we have a large population of people with different goals. They're struggling with the same thing you are. Okay. So we put a Q and a inside our social media this morning for people to ask questions and then we're going to talk about what we're doing with our current clientele, what struggles they're seeing, because I promise if you're not our client and you're watching this right now, you're struggling with some of the same things. So we try to offer to have some solutions. Okay. Um, digging into, like I said, you're going to get live and we have not researched any of these. Okay. Or you're going to get it on the fly. You can, you can fact check us if you want and we could be wrong and that's okay. <laughs> Uh, so we asked on our social, I said, hey, we're filming a podcast episode or any questions or we can address and answer them for you in the podcast. Um, first one was best magnesium supplement for rest, sleep, recovery. I always refer supplementation work to Mike Wines, who's somebody we've worked with that we'll have on here. That's an expert in those kind of things. He's been an editor for magazines that for supplement magazines and supplement content. Um, he's kind of the fact checker. He was the fact checker for um, kind of a supplement company to make sure their content was was um, up to he's date. He's like a human science textbook. Like he, yes, yes, I call him Doctor Doctor Mike, even though he's not doctor yet, but he will be. Um, he's the professor, so we can answer some of these when he's on with us, which he will. Just going through his residency right now. Um, the best. Magne there are different kinds of magnesium types uh, that do Tons. different things, right? Different kinds of magnesium. Yeah. I, I will say too, if you want a good breakdown, there's um, a woman on Instagram, Dr. Jolene Brighton, and she talks a lot about magnesium supplementation. Okay. I get a lot of information for her, but I anyways, follow her now. I follow her now. She's great. Because yeah, I follow she's her now really because awesome. Yep. Uh, magnesium glycinate is the one most accredited to rest and sleep. My comment to that, so that's the answer to it, the question. My comment to that is you have to be doing, if you're looking to improve your sleep, you have to be doing all the other things first. Okay. If you think yeah. a supplement, if you think a supplement is going to, you know, also hey, I'm just going to take a supplement, right? How many people do we know that just say, hey, let me just take a supplement? Yeah, hundred percent. I, and that I will say it probably. definitely helps. I take glycinate every night. It definitely helps with falling asleep. Mm -hmm. I think it's really great, but that's not the only thing I do. Yeah. I get sunlight every day. I read before bed. I make sure to really unplug about two hours before bed. Like I still have my phone present, but my phone goes on do not disturb about seven 30. Yeah. I try to fall asleep by nine 30. I'm not talking to anybody after that time. I try to eat dinner between six 30 and seven. Like I make sure, you know, all of these things are in check. Then I take my glycinate. Yeah, and that's that's my my main ones that I've done personal experience for me. Um, I went through a phase of about eighteen months where I was obsessed with sleep, obsessed with like the research behind sleep. Um, Mike got me going. Um, it is a superpower. Mm -hmm. S sleeping quality sleep is a superpower. Uh, people who sleep more are healthier people. They lose fat better. They have better metabolisms. They, I mean, everything gets better sleep. It's better decision it's, makers. Yes, yeah. it is the number one performance enhancement drug in the world is sleep. So, my <laughs> like main <laughs> my main thing that I do, and there are three or four things that I've done routinely over time. Um, electronics one hour before bed, mm -hmm. shut them down. 
I get my last meal two hours before I go to bed. Yep. Um, and and when I say two hours before I go to bed, I'm talking like at eight twenty nine, I'm smashing food because I hate being hungry. At eight thirty, I'm done. Right. And and I'm and 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 I get so proud of myself and I'm like eight thirty, bam. Right. Right on the dot. Yeah. Right on the dot. Right. Yeah. Um, and when I go to bed at ten thirty, I, I have two hours of no food, uh, no caffeine past noon. Mm-hmm. And I go to bed at the same time every day. Yep. Routine. Right. All about so routine. So I've done that um, before I do anything magnesium wise, right? I will tell you before you do a supplement, hammer those things. Look at your caffeine mm-hmm. intake. Look at your not eating an hour before you go to bed, uh, two hours before you go to bed. Look at your screen intake um, and, and start to have a routine. If you do those four things, Sleep will probably get better. Life will probably get better. 100%. If you're somebody that has trouble turning off their brain, which I think a lot of females can align with that, identify with that, I would highly recommend putting your phone down more often and actually reading before bed. That is the mm-hmm. biggest difference maker in my sleep. I And I track my sleep every night on my Garmin. I posted about this a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. When I watch TV before bed, and I fall asleep to the TV, my sleep score is like a 60 to a 75. One time it was a 53. When I read for an hour before bed and I'm like falling asleep with my book in my hand, my sleep score is a 90 or above every time. Well, It's a huge difference. And I would recommend too, like be obsessed with your sleep, track your sleep. I think there's nothing better that I've done for myself than tracking my sleep every night and getting really competitive with sleeping better and seeing how good I can get my sleep score. I love hearing people when they're like insomnia. No, you just have crappy habits, bro. You don't yeah. have insomnia, right? It's like, it's like, and that's a, that's a bigger subject, right? Um, a lot of hormone problems. Do you really, or you just eat crappy, right? Um, you said it with all due respect. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one of my worst things. The things that I, I struggle with is like um I'm I'm allergic to gluten. Really have celiacs? No. Oh, that's what celiac um, So what do you mean? Yeah, what are you talking about? Um <laughs> you just eat crappy processed foods, right? You don't have insomnia. You're just staring at your phone at, at your your watching the news which is like the yeah worst it's like thing. you're like enabling it you're watching the news at 10 30 in bed with it straight to your face oh the friends. people that people yeah. crack me up when they're like i have to watch tv to fall asleep or i can't no, fall asleep i'm like true. i'm like it's actually maybe, the opposite. yeah i'm like yeah. maybe there's something that you need to work through that you really need the tv blaring yeah. with bright light in your room yeah. at 10 p.m or 11 p.m there, yeah. that's a different issue yeah that's 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 just not true right um Protein. Next one was protein. How do you fit all the that proteins? That was a lot. We yeah, saw that. Yeah. Actually, and that's everybody. And that's, that's a real life. I have a client that just started um, yesterday was her first day with her consistency calendar. And I, I pulled up her consistency calendar and um, the goal is 140. And she was at 86. And she goes, wow, I don't know if I'm going to get it. I said, okay, what about a protein supplement? Do you do a whey protein? She goes, I do 30 grams of protein um, shake in the morning. I said, okay, well, you got 110 grams to go. The best thing I can tell you is we give all of our clients, I give all of my clients that, do you know that macro sheet that you made for me? Mm -hmm. You make, I always make content and send it to Grace. She makes it look pretty and I send it to you. Um, (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. It's a multi-step. Yeah. Cause I'm just not, I'm not, when it comes to like aesthetics of stuff, I'm like, Hey, the content's there. Okay. Look at it. I don't care if it looks like that thing took forever. Yeah. I feel feel bad. But um, it basically had food, quantity of food and how much protein it had in it. Um, and what are the macros? You use it for a shopping list. I use people to guide. Um, you're going to have to do your homework on this. Okay. You're going to have to find how much food, certain foods that you eat have high protein. What foods have high protein? Um, chicken, lean ground beef, steak, ground turkey, uh, cottage mm-hmm. cheese, eggs, right? Yeah. Those types of things. Those are the main ones, right? Um, if you have 100 grams of protein in the day and you're going to eat three meals, it's 33 grams of protein a day. You got to do the work here, right? You got to do the research here. You can't just roll the dice and see at eight o'clock where my protein is. Like, you I, have I to know that you need 33 grams of protein at each meal. 
hundred percent. I think that's a, a big thing. A lot of people don't realize when they step into being a client or working on their nutrition journey on their own, you are a student, you are learning things. You have to study, you have to look into things. You have to research things. You have to spend a little extra time in the grocery store when you're getting used to your foods that you're eating to research the things that you're eating. And that's why we've always said tracking is so important because I now know what my protein sizes look like for what I'm choo choosing. I now know how to fit that in my day, even when I'm not tracking, because I know what 150 grams of protein looks like. Every That's day. what you get 150. I try to do between 130 and 150. 150 is a really good day. 130 is normally an average. It's a, it's a range, right? I'm yeah. 200 to 220 a day. Yeah. And I do that. I, th I only do protein shakes on days I work out. The rest is just food because I like to eat. Yeah. I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, People are like, you don't do protein shakes every day. No, because I like food. Like, yeah, I want to eat food. But that's, and that's the thing too. Like if you have to use supplementation right now, don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that's a great way to start filling yourself up on more protein and getting used to those things. I, I did that for clients, a long time. I try to tell my clients one, one protein supplement a day. Yeah, not, that's it. That's all you need. Two, right. That's all you need. But if yeah. you want to increase your protein, and this is, this is something that I think is really funny that a lot of people struggled with. I struggled with this in the beginning is you can eat more than a singular serving size. So people will be like, well, the serving size of ground Turkey is four ounces. I'm like, eat six. Nobody's yeah, telling you right. that you can't. I eat six, serve, six ounces. That's how much protein I get in my lunch and my dinner. But you weigh before. Yeah. I weigh after. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. Right. Well, no. So I weigh before when it comes to meat, but I weigh or weigh after when it comes to meat. I weigh before when it comes to rice and grains okay. and pasta. Okay. Okay. I, 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 so I cook, uh, I cook a ton of food. Mm -hmm. I, I weigh all my food and, and put it in my fitness pal. And when I yeah. track as cooked. Yeah. So when I do 300 grams of rice is 300 grams of cooked rice. Right? Yeah. So you just, you want to just make yeah. sure the answer yeah. to that is just to make sure that you're doing it the same way every time. All the time. So yeah. Gonna, if I'm going to yeah. track rice, I always track uncooked. If I'm going to track ground turkey, I always track cooked. Yeah. So the key to this thing is if you need 100 grams of protein a day and you're going to eat four meals a day, you need 25 grams of protein at each meal. Okay. That's the best way to do it. That's the, okay. Split it. Every meal. Not, oh, I got 12 grams of protein and then eight grams of protein because all I had was a scoop of peanut butter and it's 10 o'clock or nine, eight o'clock at night. And I'm 80 grams of short. No, you, you failed to plan. Right. And this takes practice. Also like you planning ahead. Like I've had clients be like, well, I ate the food, but then when I tracked it, I realized it only had 20 grams of protein. I needed 40. Okay. Wait, you, you did what you ate it. You can you, wing this. Yeah. You like, well, I only, I didn't realize that recipe only had like two and a half ounces of chicken when I needed five. Right. Like, you cannot right. win this until you are years into this. Yes. I'm telling yeah. you, right. I, I just got to a point where I can start winging my days a little bit more. And I am five years into this. I'm probably three years into tracking, but I am, I am a long way. Yeah. I'm a psychopath. I've been tracking seven and a half years. I've been tracking yeah. as long as my child is old. Okay. It's crazy, but so, you have yeah. to plan ahead. I'm a psycho. So one of my little pleasures in life, my little dopamine hit is if I need five ounces of chicken, I grab five ounces of chicken and I go to weigh it. And if I hit five ounces of chicken right on the dot, oh, I'm like, oh. hit, it's hit, like, like a little dopamine <laughs> hit. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I want people to notice. I want to put, I want, I'm like, someone should be here to congratulate me, right? You need like stars in the background, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like fireworks going five yeah. ounces. So to get the protein, Steve one, Harvey in the back, <laughs> took a bunch of food beforehand. Yeah. Split your meals evenly throughout the day and plan for it. Like it's in practice, practice, practice it. Okay. Research. Yes. Yeah. See the things that fit inside of your diary. Get to know your foods. <laughs> if you're not somebody that loves to track, but you just track your protein, you still have to get to know what your protein source looks like. You can use the hand method. If you're not great at tracking right now, mm -hmm. if it doesn't fit with you, hand method is also a really great one. I know for women, you need four to five hands per day like our palms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for men, I think it's like six or seven, depending yeah. on your weight, of course. But I think that's the average. Get to know your food. That's going to be one of the I mean, best things to do. And the this, second thing to that is plan ahead. Plan ahead. And it's not going to happen on, by magic, right? Correct. Um, if you're not looking at your protein until the end of the night, you need to look at it through the day. The night before. It'll change. <laughs> Honestly, it'll, the night before. Yes, it'll change your life when you start eating enough protein. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you need to simplify question. that too, I will add this. 
meal prep a little bit. Meal prep for if you're fine with eating the same lunch every day, meal prep your lunch. If you're fine with eating the same dinner two nights in a row, that's what I do. I meal prep my lunch for Monday through Thursday, and I have the same thing for dinner Monday and Tuesday night, as well as Wednesday and Thursday night, as long as my boyfriend's traveling. When he's home, yeah. we mix it up a little bit more. But when he's away, that's what I do. Makes it easy. I think this answers the protein question. Plan ahead, learn your food, track your food, mm-hmm. practice, be diligent. Right. And then it's, 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 you got to put the, like this, you got to put the effort into it. Yeah. Right. Um, good question. Uh, another one for Mike, how does supplementation differ for a 60 year old athlete? One, I love the fact that this person calls themselves an athlete at 60. I think that's awesome. This person also uh, at one point was one of like the top five ranked CrossFit competitors and masters in the world. So he's a dude, right? That's a dude. Like, you can say, well, it's masters. Whoa. Hey, bro. I know this guy. He's a dog, right? <laughs> when I knew him, he was like 52 years old. One of the top masters competitors in the world. I'm sorry. If you're top five in the world in anything, you're probably pretty awesome. Oh, 100%. Right? right? I don't care what it is, right? So Unless you're on the most wanted list, then yeah, I'm top that's five. It's still a great accomplishment, <laughs> right? It's still a okay, great accomplishment. Okay, you're not wrong. You're not right? wrong. Right? Um, I would say this, I don't think it differs for 60 than anybody else. I don't think something it's where are you, def- where are you deficient and fill those deficiencies with supplements if you need to, mm-hmm. um, that is no different than for me, for you, for anybody. Yeah. We don't know those deficiencies until we get the blood work done. Right. I mean, you can, we can give you an average yes. of like what we would see with older clients could be yes. jo- bone issues, joint issues, those kinds of things. But for, it's going to be different for every single person. If I if, could give you just like a, a roundabout sleep exercise, make sure that you get sunlight and make sure that you're eating whole foods. That's what you would tell anybody, anybody from a supplement. You can do creatine. You can do whey protein. I know uh, the older athletes, the older you get, due to changes in muscle protein synthesis, you need to eat more protein, mm-hmm. right? Um, so increase your protein intake. Omega-3 is for joint health is yes. always a big one. Creatine's fine. Magnesium's fine. All the basics. But my recommendation would be go get blood work done and find out where you're deficient. If you have questions about blood work, we have a blood work video in our YouTube that Mike did that showed you how you can get blood work and probably save 90% in your blood work. By doing it a la carte through places, blood work doesn't have to be 450 bucks through your insurance. You don't need to get scammed by the crappy medical system we have that overcharges everybody for everything because it's about money, not about your health. All right. Truth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Mic drop. How to regulate training days. Push harder when you feel good or back off when things feel off. Okay. Things that get measured get managed. If you can track your readiness score through a Garmin, through an Aura Ring, through Whoop, whatever you choose, that'll give you when to pump the brakes and when to push. So Mm -hmm. if you can track your recovery and your readiness, that's the number one way to do it. Um, This is a really hard question for me to answer because I am not good here. I read line training and have for years. Uh, from jujitsu training to lifting, I have a hard time with my body when it's, hey, you're overtrained or, hey, you're just a big sissy. Hmm. I have a hard time with that, right? I'm, uh, I redline, I don't, I really don't know how to answer this question to this person. I know this person has had a history of injury, so they're really cautious when there's any slight chance of possible injury or a twinge or I feel bad. They're really cautious about it leading to an injury because they've had lots of injuries that have set them back. So there's a psychological aspect here. I had the, I had Definitely. neck surgery, broke my neck, had neck surgery. I was nervous about it. Now I'm past it, which means I'll probably have another neck surgery one day. Mm. Um, um, but I don't know how to answer that question, Gray. Um, it's kind of up to the individual. I have my days where like this week where I'm like really into working out and I, and working out in a different way. And I'm just training through soreness. I'll have other weeks sometimes where I'm really sore and I know that I need to take a day off. I think Mm -hmm. listen to your body as well as your mind, listen to your mind too. If your mind is kind of steering away from doing something, 
you don't have to force yourself to do it. You're not going to be any less valuable in your own workout program. If you have to take a day off or take a day of lighter recovery, any movement is going to be good movement. Mm -hmm. I always recommend if you can't do your hardest variation of whatever your workout program is, I don't care if you go in the gym for 20 minutes or you go outside for a walk for 20 minutes, but you want to be consistent within your plan. So whatever that looks like for you. Um, this is why I tell clients all the time too. And I just had a really great consult with a client earlier this morning about being multidimensional, being a multi-sport kind of athlete, because like I texted you on Monday, like I'm kind of over my weightlifting plan right now. Yeah. Yeah. I rarely you told me get you were going to be a runner. I rarely get the urge to go for a run, but I went for a run on Monday and I spent an hour outside. I ended up running to my gym, lifting for 30 minutes and then running back home or walking back home. Oh, but I, I can't tell you how great it felt just to do something a little bit different and to really be comfortable inside of doing something else. So if you can be comfortable in other ways of fitness, not just weightlifting, it'll make a difference too. Cause you can fall back on that. So here's, here's something cool that's happening in our Facebook group is Mike Wines is alive. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Mike Lines. And he's glad you could pick your nose up. He's commenting, right? Mike Lines is okay. recently is doing his residency and it's brutal. Um, he did say on the supplement differ for a 60-year-old. He said it depends on needs, dietary, and taking blood work. Exactly what we exactly said. Exactly what yep. we said. But thanks, the, Mike. You've the, taught the main us things, everything. The main things are the main things, right? Uh protein, protein supplements are fine, creatine, um, fish oil type, magnesium. Do you take creatine? Uh, mm -hmm. five Me to too. Ten, and five, five to 10 grams a day every day with my liquid IV first thing in the morning as routine. That is what I notice is the best for my brain health. When I am on my creatine, I feel in reading too, because reading really does help. Yeah. Um, my brain feels like it operates at warp speed. Like I, I just feel mm -hmm. mentally clearer when I'm taking my creatine. And then mm -hmm. I'll go a few days if I'm traveling or something and not have it. And I'm like, I think I've lost IQ points. <laughs> I'm not taking my creatine. One thing we're going to go on to creatine because somebody asked creatine yes or no. Um, from a regulating training, I find that a large majority of people don't train hard enough. Yeah. So when somebody tells me that they're, tra they're overtrained, I really look at all the aspects of their sleep, their recovery, their nutrition, and their programming, because I have some clients right now on reduction ridiculous high amounts of volume training mostly females <laughs> females in my experience there's some can handle a little bit more volume that are doing um one of my girls i'm going to say her name um ilana oh yeah she looks incredible who is listen y'all i'm going to bring come her a long on way. the story on this podcast because she has been with me for a year and a half and the process has been slow, but steady. She's kept it all off. She did it right. She's been patient, coachable. Body has changed dramatically. Did all of her pictures. And people will be like, wait, it took you a year and a half? Yeah, but she's never going to go back. People have lost as much weight as she had, but she's gaining muscle. Um, she Her program is a retarded amount of, 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 of volume. But y'all, yeah. nutrition is on point, sleep is on point, lifestyle is on point, moderation is right there, and she can handle it and she recovers. Uh, most, people, most people don't train hard enough. I I, I don't, I, you know, there is a difference between I don't want to get up and go to the gym because I'm overtrained or, and I don't want to get up and go to the gym because I'm lazy. There is a difference. Yeah. Majority of people are just lazy. <laughs> Definitely. And I, this, I tell my classes this all the time when I'm teaching, I, there's this, some Joe Rogan podcast or video where he said, you know, I train really hard and I train really intense because that is where I gain the most respect for myself. Mm. I can't agree more. And I'm, I'm thankful for the days, even when I don't have my greatest workout and it's not super intense. I need those days sometimes with teaching five to seven classes a week. I need to take days off. I need to take lower intensity days, but I gain like I did on Monday when I ran three miles, I gain the most respect for myself. When I push myself into a different level of uncomfort, discomfort, that kind of thing. Like, of course, running is still like a comfortable zone for me, but running three miles on a day where I just didn't plan for it. I just kind of did it. I gained respect for myself because I'm like, I can do hard things. Let me I can ask, do those things. Let me ask this. Are you a crier? Oh my God. I cry every day. I'm, I'm a crier when I watch. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Um, One time my kid was on the phone with my mother doing FaceTime and we were watching um, 
Inside Out. You ever seen? Oh my god! Inside Out. I that and that me. that part like a cry right, that part when um she the 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 elephant like lets her go and then falls in the the memory where she forgets the elephant and flying away and I like got tears in my eyes. Asher looks at my mom on Facetime and then looks at me and looks at my mom and goes, "Daddy's crying again watching the movie." And I'm like, shut up, right? Like, I'm crying again. Watch. So I, I'm a little bit of a crier with movies. I tell people that, like, if you ever gone through crap in your life and you have, like, a moment of mental, mental breakdown where it's just tear, cry, flow, a mm-hmm. hard, hard, hard workout where you're exhausted at the end of it. This is what jujitsu does for me. When mm-hmm. I'm absolutely been worked out so hard that I'm on the ground sweating catching my breath brutalized it is the equivalent to an emotional body full out cry session definitely and then you're like wow i feel so much better right you feel so much better no 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. and it doesn't mean that that has to take place all the time i don't believe that you should be training to failure or that intensely every single day once a week though if you can push yourself maybe twice a week to go beyond your comfort and just really challenge yourself I think the mental strength that you get from not that, not just the physical strength is so huge. And I like, I try to push this on my clients a lot too. Like I, I want you to believe that you can do hard things. That is the most valuable lesson that I've ever learned. Prove to yourself that you can do hard things. Yes. A hundred percent. And you can overcome it. I learned that while I was training for my marathon, I used I Nike that. run club. I, remember that. I know I use Nike run club and there is a coach on there that talks to you. Like while you're doing your run, like there's like pre-recorded stuff, um, coach Bennett. And I can't remember his first name right now, but he's a big Nike run club guy. And he had this whole spiel about doing hard things. And I remember running like vividly on the river walk in Columbia being like, okay, I've kind of always lived my life in this way where I always force myself out of my comfort zone and thankful for my parents for teaching me that lesson. doesn't matter what you apply that to. If that's your workouts, if that's traveling, if that's a job, if that's a relationship, if you can push yourself to do hard things once a month, twice a year, I don't really care. Mm. You're going to continue to prove to yourself how mentally strong you are so that when you walk into a weight room, when you walk into a new class, when you walk into a new relationship or whatever, like you feel capable of doing those things because you've taught yourself that you are strong. And that's why I think weightlifting is so good for people because it teaches them confidence in the weight room and outside of the weight room. So many women I know hit the weight room and it changes their life. Oh my God. That's exactly how I feel when I, I've always felt that I was pretty mentally strong. Strong When I learned that I was strong physically, I became so much stronger mentally. Mm -hmm. Learning to do hard things, learning to suck at something and getting better. Oh, that's the best lesson you'll ever Right. Um, I've been in a situation with jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu, where I first competed in 2010. And I've had three major injuries that set me back about a year and a half each injury. So I've had about 10 years total of jujitsu training as a black belt. When I have, and when I know people that start and I create a relationship with them or a friendship, Cause there's a mentor side to that one. You're really very good. Like you're really good at it when you've done it that long and you get a black belt, you're pretty competent. You don't get nervous anymore when you roll with people. Um, you can roll at levels where you choke people and some people you just play with some people you have fun. It's learning. I tell people all the time when they start, I said, Hey, the only difference between me and you or somebody good is I, I kept going. I didn't quit. I said, this is going to get really hard. And I said, one, I respect you for getting on the mat and trying something new as a man because you're going to get your ass beat for a year and a half. Your ass beat for a year and a half. Literally, you're going to be helpless and useless in the water. And somebody's going to throw you a brick and tell you to swim in jujitsu. And it's hard. It's hard, 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 hard. It's miserably hard. Also, jujitsu doesn't lie. If you're not good, you get choked out. You also learn that with jujitsu, when you make a mistake, you get choked out. There's, there's consequences for your actions and it's really hard. And I tell people all the time, this is going to get really hard. Don't quit. Yeah. Just don't quit. And that's such a life lesson for anything you do. Most people don't realize how strong they actually are. 100%. Mentally, physically, 
you know, some of the most stressful times in my life, I really didn't realize how stressful they were until it was over. Yeah. And people go, wait, what? I'm like, yeah. And you didn't, I said, yeah, it's fine. I just, no, I'm good. And you're like, yeah, you're like, they're like, man, I didn't, I couldn't, man. Well, at the time you're, you know, right. A lot of people said that to me, like when I was moving to Montana, they're like, you don't know anyone there. Like you're just going. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, what if you don't like it? And I'm like, then I come back. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like I, I'm not, I, I'm not planting roots there firmly. Like I'm not tied to this place. Like I can pick up and leave whenever I want. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But like, what do you mean? It's mm -hmm. not that big of a deal. That's just telling me like people that haven't challenged themselves to do something as courageous as picking up and moving your entire life or starting something new and coming back to it. Like it is so important for adults to have hobbies that push them to do stuff. When I had neck surgery, it sucked to have neck surgery. I was so excited when I was done because I was like, you know what? Now I get to start the process back from square one and go all the way back and start a process of checking off days, mm -hmm. days, 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 six months back on jujitsu mat. Boom. Days, days, checking, checking, going. Every day got better. It was so awesome to have the mindset of day one, get better on day two, get better on day three and have that process. It got me out of a rut. Yeah. It oh, I believe it. Right. Like you're just like, what? Cause, cause I do, I do, I do. Um, I, I'm intrinsically, I'm an intrinsically motivated human being. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need too much from the outside to encourage me inside. Right. But um, yeah, I think most to get back where we're at, most people under train. Yeah. Most people don't know what they're capable of. Most people don't know how to push through things that suck. Um, very few people, general population people outside of the outliers who are, who need to have the gas brakes put on, um, are at a state of overtime. I'd say 80% of our, 80 to 90% 90 of our population don't work out hard enough. Right. I, I firmly agree with you. Uh, creatine. We covered it a little bit. Um, Yes, to creatine, all above. Any, <laughs> 100%. Any, there's, there's enough research out there that at any age you can take creatine. Um, no, it's not a steroid. No, uh, it's uh, if you're a doctor and you say uh, steroid or creatine is bad for anybody over 18, again, we already had this conversation. Quit listening to your general doctor on I will and say advice. Just check if you are pregnant, just check with your gynecologist. Um, I know Thorne company makes really good products, not just mm -hmm. creatine, but they make really good, safe, sustainable mm -hmm. products for um, supplements. Just check with your gyno. If you are yeah. pregnant, I ran into that with a client. Yeah. She's fine to take creatine, yeah. but her gyno was like, please just take the Thorne because yeah. we know it's pregnancy safe. Yes. yes. And if you've had issues of like kidney failure, kidney disease, uh, talk to if, your doctor. Yep. Yeah, um, <laughs> talk to your doctor if you've had any kidney failure, kidney disease. Um, no, creatine is not bad for the kidneys, but if you've had kidney issues before, you don't want to make your kidneys work more. Probably the same reason you should do a lot of things if you've had kidney failure. Yeah. Your creatinine levels are going to go up. Um, I'm so sick and tired of idiot doctors doing a physical and a strong, healthy 30 year old male who takes creatine and lifts weights go. Your creatine levels are high. You should quit taking. No, you idiot. Of course, your creatine levels are going to be high if you're taking creatine and lifting weights and having muscle breakdown. That's stupid. They're ignorant, right? Again, quit listening to your general practice doctor about your health, right? If you need a Z pack, <laughs> go to them, get a Z pack, peace out, hit the day, pay your 150, have fun, right? Um, but that guy's an idiot. Um, no, creatine is completely fine, healthy. The cognitive benefits of creatine are unbelievable. Telling you. Um, it is it is off the charts what it does for you cognitively, um, off the charts what it does for you for muscle repair, ATP production. Um, no, you're not gonna bloat and cramp. Um, you're fine. It's a wonderful, wonderful supplement your body already produces. No, if you eat meat, you're not gonna get enough. Um, 
my mother is 78 years old and she takes creatine. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I for, for, might even I, go as far to say as it makes me feel like I took Adderall, but in a good way. Yes, <laughs> that could um, be placebo. Great one coming up here, and this is I'm gonna I'm gonna call his ass out. Uh, Blake Holloman is a client um, and a great friend and a great overall dude. Um, how do you balance extremism? I can take that. Uh, building good consistent habits and life change while staying sustainable and not throwing yourself off of the impossible <laughs> impossible cliff so i'm going to share uh blake's story has been one of extremism to uh extreme eating to extreme dieting he's lost uh, gained a lot of weight over the years uh we are working on healthy habits healthy goals um managing extremism i am an extremist um if i was a cocaine addict i'd be the number one cocaine addict in the world okay <laughs> um uh i remember at 18 years old getting my first tattoo saying i'm just gonna get one tattoo and now i got like right um i have had healthy unhealthy habits with food that tracking helped me manage um when I first got involved in jujitsu, I just didn't do jujitsu. I lived jujitsu and was there 24 seven all the time, which led to the injuries. Managing and tracking my activities and my food has helped me become sustainable over time. My answer to Blake, and this is something we've consistently worked on, is um, having daily process goals and having a routine and having a plan every day that you stick to, but don't treat it like a prison to me is one of the best ways to break extremism. Um, if you track and you eat over calories one day, doesn't mean you have to starve yourself the next day. You don't have to go for a 30 mile run and kill yourself in the gym and go carb free the next day. Or don't say fuck it and just continue yeah. on that trail. Cause you've yeah. already fucked up. Yeah. You already messed up. Right. Um, there are people that do great for two weeks the 13th the the, the the 15th day they have two cheeseburgers then they have some ice cream at night and the next day they get up they feel crappy about it we think they're a loser they can't do it so then they have another mm -hmm. bad day and another bad day and another bad day another off it right spiral yeah man i i guess the best thing i can say for someone who's battling the cycle of going up and going down going up and going down in their diet or life is things that get managed get measured, get managed. If you can start measuring your intake, measuring your exercise, journaling about how you feel when you do freak out and all of a sudden you drove through the drive through and smashed 15 whoppers journal around how you feel about that. Right. I mean, that's a hard one for me. I don't know how to answer that other than acknowledge one. It's really, really hard Two, it's, not uncommon and three if you measure it you can manage it yeah i give have me, a client give me, your, give me your take yeah 100 all or nothing mindset is detrimental it is absolutely detrimental um i'm fortunate i don't struggle with all or nothing mindset but i've worked with Man, a do. ton of people who do i i'm just not wired that way no. i just i don't guilt myself into doing something because i i should be doing it if i don't want to do it i'm not going to do it mm -hmm. um I do have a couple of clients so that deal with it pretty heavily. And I have one client that um, lost her daughter. So she's dealing with grief and you know who this client is. Mm -hmm. She's been my client for a long time. So moving through the years of grief, um, every year looks different. Every mm -hmm. month looks different. Honestly, sometimes every mm -hmm. week looks different. Mm -hmm. We've come up with a plan that we've been working on for the last year called her stoplight plan. It's red light, green light, yellow light, red light day is her basic minimums. What does she need to do to make this a full day, essentially of not letting grief consume her? It's what does stuff that, like, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah. Stuff like getting out of bed, brushing her teeth, going for a walk, um, being mindful, following the plate rule, like the most basic things that she needs to do to make this a full day. And she'll set alarms for it. She'll set a schedule for it. Um, and I think that's really, really great, but it's just basic human necessity. And that's getting outside, making sure she's eating, getting out of bed, like period, taking a shower. 
period. Um, it's obviously progressed throughout the year. It's gotten a little bit more challenging as time has gone on, but that's where it started. Hmm. Yellow light plan, getting a workout in, making sure she's tracking most of her day, following the plate rule. If she can't track her entire day, uh, journaling, there's like a few, just more steps in her yellow light, green light day. Everything's on it. She's gotten her workout in. She's tracking fully. She's making sure she's journaling. She's making sure that she's gotten to her daily task. Her work is done. Like green light day is a perfect routine day. Again, over time, these days have gotten a little bit more challenging. So then green light day is like protein is nailed. Um, I'm getting a full breakfast in. I'm getting, you know, my 30 to 40 grams of protein at breakfast. Mm -hmm. It has been life-changing because she still battles with the mindset, but we had a call yesterday and she's like, you know, if I, I, if I can't get to something, it's okay. I don't have to scrap my day because I didn't get my walk-in at the time that I normally get my walk-in. I just do something else. Um, or I, you know, say, okay, yesterday wasn't a great walk day, but I'm going to make today my walk day. It's not the all or nothing. It's always the all or something. And if you can give me something, you can give yourself something. You're going to be a lot better than doing absolutely nothing. Right. Every single time. And some days you just don't have the all mentality. You just don't. I have a client that's a former athlete, 315 pounds, gained a bunch of weight, a little depressed about it contacted me about coaching him and um he's had a heart he's having a hard time just getting going right yeah just just you know to him almost like the mountain list looks too big to climb and we do what we do with every client we break every day into process goals what do you got to do every day win one day win the next day win 24 hours win 24 hours win the next 24 hours Mm -hmm. you lost the next 24 hours but win the next 24 hours right we broke it down into daily process goals what you got to do every day over time Don't look at like, if you want to lose 50 pounds in a year, don't look at the year, look at the day, Mm -hmm. look at day one, day two, all the way to 365 and win each day. And, um, one of the things is a very caring, loving God, the great family. And one of the quotes I told him last time we talked, I said, um, and it's a quote everybody's heard. It's uh, treat yourself like somebody responsible for taking care of. Mm -hmm. And I said, buddy, if this was your brother or your sister or a relative, I promise the way you're living is not the way you would try to encourage them. I said, I promise if your brother was in the same situation you're in, you would be like, dude, you got to get up and move. You got to walk. You got to eat breakfast. You got to, you know, cut back on alcohol. You need to get sleep. Like, because you love that person, you care about that person. I said, and he's like, you're right. He's like, I don't treat myself like I would expect everybody. Like I put myself last. He said, you got to treat yourself like somebody you're responsible for taking care of. And that's me too. Like I have tons of people I give advice to and I'm like, shit. I didn't do I'm that. Looking, yeah. I'm looking in the mirror, right? Like, But that, and that's, it's like literally your first nature is to not take care of yourself. It's to take care of everybody else. And mm-hmm. I understand that 110%. Yeah, I, you're, I motherly. Have, you're motherly. You're motherly. I you am are, a nurturer. You're, you're are a mother gray, especially but with your friends and, and I know people, right? I know. Yeah. But the best thing I did for myself, and I, I've told you this before, in 2020, when the world shut down and I couldn't work because we were at home, not couldn't be mm-hmm. in the gym, I worked very, very seriously on setting boundaries mm-hmm. and making sure, like I told you earlier, my phone goes on do not disturb at 7 30. Yeah. I'm not answering people. You know, I learned that you not answering I, I never contact you at night. Very, yeah. very rarely. rarely. I... And I'll text yeah. you back. You're like texting my best friend. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I've stopped answering people on weekends because mm-hmm. I was letting people ask me questions on weekends. And some weekends I'm working mm-hmm. granted if, you know, if I'm traveling during the week or whatever, and I need to work weekend, I do, but I set immense boundaries for myself. And I think that always relates back to really learning more about yourself and taking care of yourself wholly pushing yourself to do those hard things, to do things that are not comfortable. I think boundaries is a huge one because then you're going to learn about what do I need to be taken care of? Anytime I text you at night, I'm like, Hey, feel free not to answer this until the morning or something. Right. Like that, right? I'm like, yeah. And hey, sometimes girl. I don't. Yeah. And that's if it's after I, eight. I give you, I give asleep. you, and I usually I text you because I'm like, crap, I forgot. I got like, Boom, boom. I forgot this. Let me get it out. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about texting. And that's fine. And you text me like 530 in the morning. 
<laughs> but like, um, set, yeah, setting boundaries, establishing expectations for yourself, mm -hmm. finishing one day at a time. When people are on a nutrition plan and they have one bad day, I say, just don't have two in a row. One, I give yeah, them Yeah, exactly. I, I give them No breaks. two bad days. Yeah. No two bad days in a row. Don't miss a Monday. You know, people, those typical things you hear from people that write self-help books. No two bad days in a row. Never miss a right. Monday, right? Right. Um, you're worth it, right? All that kind of self-help, you know. Um, to avoid extremism, find moderation through through managing and tracking things mm -hmm. that you that you can see a mess up isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say another thing. Weighing daily and tracking your food daily. Yes. Um, no, you don't have an eating disorder and an unhealthy relationship with your diet and the scale, which people do. I'm not saying that does not exist, right? But just like everybody who tries to tell me that they have insomnia, you don't. Just like people that try to tell me they have hormone problems, you don't. Just like everybody tries to say, I, I have, oh, I'm allergic to gluten. No, you just eat all processed foods, right? Mm -hmm. um, you don't have an unhealthy relationship with your weight. You just have a hard time with the accountability of taking acceptance of where you currently are. Boom. If you weigh 315 <laughs> pounds, that's your fault. You're there, right? Tons of things mm -hmm. that go to it, but you have all truth start, starts with the truth all change starts with the truth you have to accept with where you're at no you don't have an unhealthy relationship with food you just make bad decisions with your food tracking keeps you accountable Correct. no you don't have a, 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 a unhealthy relationship with the scale you have an unhealthy relationship with the things with yourself and the and accountability you're looking that comes for your... from the scale you're looking for a way out that or like you're seeing looking your... for a way out or you're seeing your value is only a number and I, this is a big touch on the female clients that we see who gives a fuck what you weigh. It doesn't mm -hmm. fucking matter. It really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Is it a great way to mark progress? Yes. 100%. Because if you weigh yourself every day, we're going to get to know the weight fluctuations, mm -hmm. but you also are more likely to make better decisions mm -hmm. because you know, you got to weigh in the next day. But it's not an obsession. No, it's, I tell, I'm telling you every female client that I've I've told, and I, it's always an option. You do not have to do it, but every female client that has agreed to weigh every day, they come out so much stronger because they're like, oh, it's just a number on the scale. And I know yeah. that it's probably going to go up on Saturday because I have a, a date night on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like exactly. Yeah. It's or your cycle or your cycle, right? Or your cycle, right. whatever. I mean, we can gain up to seven yeah. pounds in a singular day, yeah. but you also have to, you also start to learn to understand how food affects the scale. You can measure daily. Look at, look at, look at trends weekly. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody I know that starts learns to track their food and weigh daily has success. It's just right? like, I mean, to me, it's just like tracking my sleep, you know, yeah. like when I'm in a deficit trying to lose weight for me, it's just like tracking my sleep. I get up in the morning. I, I see how many hours I slept. I see how much I weigh. And I'm like, all right, well, is there something I could have done better? When I'm people say, when people say, Hey, I don't want to weigh because I want to go about how I'm doing based on how my clothes fit, it takes a long time to see a difference in your clothes fit. Oh, yes. And your progress picture. Like it really does. The fastest thing that you're probably going to see is the weight. Mm -hmm. And it, eventually it's going to get to a place where your weight might ch not change very much. You know, this, I haven't changed weight in like three or four years. I just look mm -hmm. entirely different. So now I go more off of my clothes and how they mm -hmm. fit and how my progress pictures look, but you need to have multiple ways of being accountable to yourself. It can't just be progress yeah. pictures. It can't just be weigh-ins. It can't just be, oh, I look good in the mirror. Like it needs to be multiple forms if you really want success. And as you get further into this, then you can kind of start to drop them off a little bit. I definitely don't take progress pictures as much anymore. I don't weigh myself as much as anymore. I, I can tell when I've gained a few pounds. I can tell. I had a client recently, three consistent days in a row on week three or four that they started most consistent they've been, they've had in three or four weeks and it was four days mm -hmm. in a row. They're like, I'm pretty frustrated. I, I haven't seen the scale change. And I'm like, bro, you've had eight consistent days in three weeks. Correct. What are you expecting? 
<laughs> well, that's why I, that's why the consistency calendar is so great because yeah. then I'm like, look, look at your March. How many red days, orange days, purple and pink days do you have? Green, mm. green for me on my calendar is where you've nailed your calories. The other mm. four, that's where something was messed up. How many times do you see non-green days? Do you it's go 30 days? I do, I do 30 days. I do each month. Okay. Yeah. I do about 30 days. Yeah. Um, with clients and we track consistency every day. People who use mm -hmm. the consistency calendar get results. Mm -hmm. Um, bottom line. Everybody uses the consistency calendar sees results mm -hmm. and they look back and they're like, well, where are your consistent days? Well, I didn't track it on the weekends for all month. And then, um, I didn't track on weekends. Then I only hit like three days and then, okay. So you're telling me you hit three or four days. You didn't track on the weekends. So th three of your seven days, 40% of your days through the month you had no clue what was going on with your exercise or your food intake. And you're telling me you're upset after 30 days that you didn't lose any weight. Yeah. And then they're like, Oh, I don't, yeah, I get it now. And I'm like, did you see, that's why the, we have a calendar. Did you see the, the progress picture I showed of you of the girl that's um, she's already in shape and she's just mm -hmm. got thinner. Yeah. She's getting married soon. She's five ten, five ten, five eleven. Wow. Right? Yeah. And she's getting married in June and I challenged her for her, like the month of m February, like, Hey, 28 days track mm -hmm. every weekend. Like, like screw it. Like, like I think she cut back her alcohol, to like one drink a week. Dang. And, and tracked every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That was her only change. And like lost like five, six pounds in February. You start, and that's like, that's and she's where you like, start holy value. crap. She's like, holy crap. Now sold all in 100% mm -hmm. all in right. Tracking, feeling great. She doesn't starve herself. Loves Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, the day she goes to eat. Cause when you're, when you're engaged, don't try to like get your body right for your wedding and sacrifice your relationship. Right. They still have date nights and stuff. Yeah. She tracks the food, just eats through the day accordingly, hits every weekend, cut back alcohol, still has fun with her fiance, still lives her life, still losing. And then she's like, she's, listen, my follow-ups with her weekly are like, still good? She goes, yep. Can the calendar looks great. Yep. Tracking every day. Here are my numbers. Working out. Boom. Good. Repeat next week. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Exactly. And it took some, it took about two months of nothing happening. And her fiance is also working with me. She did it. All of a sudden, her fiance is more on board with it. He's dropped nine pounds in a month. Mm -hmm. Environment matters. He saw her getting results. He started doing his job. He travels a lot. Followed nine pounds. Boom, boom. It happens. All of a sudden, we're in a, a, a we're in the home stretch, and they're crushing it. Right. That's what I was going to say earlier too. When you brought up that the guy that's three hundred fifteen pounds, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're somebody that doesn't have a lot of internal motivation. Get some external motivation. Have a partner in this with you. Go yeah. to a, stu a studio fitness class if you need to. Have the community around it because that to me is what makes a huge difference. I've always been internally motivated, but it makes a huge difference when I have a partner. Like I thank God for my boyfriend who is also very motivated mm -hmm. because we text and we talk about our workouts every day. We talk mm -hmm. about the food that we eat every day. And it keeps us very accountable to the things that we're doing. Yeah, and that's and, not obsession. Somebody's you know, going to listen to this and be like, oh, this is, they're a weird couple. No, they're not. Because they, I don't give a shit what you think. Yeah, They've made it important. Health important. I tell you what, health <laughs> will become important to you when you lose it hundred percent. Right. And it, it's funny. Cause we, I, we were on the phone on FaceTime. My boyfriend travels for work. He's gone for two and three months at a time. We were on FaceTime the other night. And I was like, I want to play this like weird 20 questions game or whatever. Um, and one of the questions was like, what has changed the most since we started dating? And he was like, my nutrition, I feel a lot better. And I was like, you're oh, welcome. Yeah. But that's, yeah. it's just, it's cool. Like when yeah. you have your, that gives you, that gives you value. Doesn't it? You, 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 you saw, like, look at you. Yeah. That gave you, you value, so? didn't you? That gave you, that affirmed you, right? You just had a biggest smile of affirmation, right? You did. That, like that my, affirms you, right? He's like, my tummy feels so much better. I'm like, yeah. you're welcome. But that affirms you in your relationship to know yeah. that you did that, right? Well, that, it's just like, it's nice to have a partnership where like when we go on date nights and want to enjoy a meal off track, we do. But 
we're very disciplined together in a sense of like, we work out every day when we're home together, we're traveling together. We work out together. Like, I can't tell you how thankful I am to wake up on a Saturday morning, know that he wants to work out with me. We go to a workout, we go get a healthy lunch. We do whatever else we need to do on Saturday, but we get to start off the morning so well. Mm. And I just think it's so beneficial in a relationship where you're growing together. The importance of having a supportive partner. Yes. Because we've coached people who have the opposite. We have, I've unfortunately. Coached, I have coached a client who all of a sudden her husband would come home in the evenings with like Frosties and dairy treats for him and all yeah, the kids. I have to. And would, would bring one for the wife knowing. That she was on a plan. She was on a plan. Um, With all due respect, fuck I, you. I don't, that's if weird. That right? man that's weird. Or that that's woman. weird, Yeah. That was, that was really, I, I just, I didn't know what to say. I just said, I'm sorry that's happening. And, yeah. and have had husbands say to wives, um, almost, I'm uncomfortable that you're starting to lose weight. I, I like can't even get into this topic. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Cause yeah, so you're going to get mad. You're going to get mad. We're going to go but, on for another hour. But yeah, but that is that is a, a supportive spouse, people who love you and really want what's best for you. And if your spouse isn't well, on game plan with you, they don't have friends. to be. Yeah, they don't find have to be, community right? elsewhere. Right? You can still yeah. do that. Like, I think that's a big thing to remember, too, is, you know, don't push your spouse or your partner into a place where they're doing things that you want them to do, because that's not fair either. In the reverse, mm -hmm. like it's not fair if you start a diet and a workout plan and your spouse isn't totally on board. It's not fair to push that on them. Find community elsewhere if you have to. No, I had a guy go and who, get involved. I had a guy I coached who rat who greatly cut back drinking, mm -hmm. and his wife told him that he wasn't fun anymore. Ah, <gasps> tell you guys, these are real life things. Said you're not That's, that fun. You're you're uh, not that, that you're not that fun anymore. I had a recent client who um. That's went, that went, mm, went cold turkey, makes me so mad. Went cold turkey on alcohol, right? Went cold turkey on alcohol. He's lost 13 pounds in a month, 13 pounds in a month. That's amazing. Increased protein intake, cut back on mm -hmm. alcohol. And I'm like, and this is a kid I've known. I've known him since he was 15, right? He's now mm -hmm. like 31 college athlete, college football player. And he's like, man, he goes, you know, our conversation around alcohol did he go, I go, what? He goes, it made me realize one, when I'm bored, I crack open a bush light. Right. And he goes, Ew, of all choices. He, he, goes, he goes, I can clean a Sir. case. He goes, I can clean a case in a day doing yard work. I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, That's I can clean a case in a day insane. doing yard work. Insane. And he goes, it was three or four a night out of boredom, out of routine. Mm -hmm. He goes, I wasn't sleeping. I was snoring all the time. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I literally, when we had a conversation, had to sit back and realize that. I had an unhealthy thing going on with alcohol mm -hmm. and I was just better off with none of it. I'm like, you're telling me you had that realization and just said no more. He goes, yeah, I've started exercising, started eating better, cut back alcohol. I sleep better. I've lost 12 pounds this month. And I see it on his calendar. Like he dropped like eight pounds in 10 days. It just shows fat, you right? like this, what alcohol yeah. does to your body, the inflammation that you're and carrying he's like, around man, from alcohol. He's like, I feel great. I move great. I eat more food. Um, yeah, I just had to come to the realization that I had un, un, uh, in the long run. Now, wife just had a baby, right? Um, he didn't want his kid to be around. And, and I'm like, wow, that's unbelievable insight. Bro. Yeah. He's like, yeah, just yeah. so and I realized I can't, I just I just don't want I don't want it in my life anymore. I don't want where what it did. He goes, I'm not saying I had a drinking problem, but I was drinking enough for it to one day be a problem. Yeah, definitely. And I'm like, I think that's so huge. I think if anybody looking to lose weight or just get healthier could reduce their drinking habits, not even mm. cut it out entirely, but just reduce your drinking habits. You are going to notice such a difference in not only your weight loss, but how you feel yeah. and how you sleep and how you go about your day to day, because you're not so attached to something that's making you feel like shit. So when I have conversations with clients about alcohol, I say, all right, here's the last thing we're going to talk about. And it's a consult new client. I said, what's your alcohol intake like? 
And they're like, oh, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. Most of the time they're casual, right? Um, I had a client that counted the number of drinks one week and it was 14. Uh, mm -hmm. She originally told me five or six. She's like, wow, I didn't know. I was yeah. 14 drinks a week. Um, I said, okay, well, if you're, if you're drinking six drinks a week on average, and it's usually like one during the week and then like five on a weekend or six on a week, mm -hmm. right? I said, where are you comfortable? I said, one, do you really, do you believe that alcohol effect is going to affect your, your, your weight loss and all that? Yes or no. Maybe, you know, I explained to them how it does affect weight loss. Um, extra calories, how alcohol inhibits fat metabolism. Um, if you get a little buzz, you're more likely to eat a bunch of calories, right? I just have that conversation. And I say, where are you the most, what are you comfortable doing? Knowing that you need to decrease alcohol intake to get the results you're telling me. Mm -hmm. Where are you comfortable and what boundaries can we place on it? That's your decision. Because that's a sensitive thing for people. And I let them tell me. I never tell them. Yeah. Or you can only have three drinks a week. No. Okay, well, I really don't want to decrease. Well, then if you don't want to decrease, you got to realize this is going to take a really, really, really long time. Yeah, don't results. expect a lot of yeah, change. Yeah. yeah. Um, A lot of people, two things that have helped a lot of people from the alcohol standpoint. One, I won't have alcohol at the house. I only have it when I go out to dinner. Correct. Huge. Mm -hmm. um, don't keep it in the uh, house. Nothing on a, on a weekday. Mm-hmm only weekends mm -hmm. um they, we almost do like um um uh what do you call it um intermittent fasting but for alcohol we only give yeah. them time we only give them time frames yeah no um, 100, but yeah, it, like, works. Like, it works like okay and uh saturday sunday realize... i'm only gonna have a beer between five and eight yeah you start right, don't realize smash you don't it, need right? it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a hundred percent of people that I know that cut back on alcohol don't realize the effect it had on their body. And yes. They, and you get that text, right. you get that text like two weeks in, like, wow, I slept really great last yeah. night. Like yeah. I'm feeling really I, good. I, just don't, like, I don't, I don't crave it anymore. I don't want it anymore. Yes. That's right. such a good one. Yeah. Um, I've had palates change. I've had somebody go 30 days without red wine and then they went back to red wine on day 30. Like, and they're like, Oh, it doesn't even taste that good anymore. Right. Yeah, so exactly. You figure um, out you don't need it. Well, I think this is good for uh, episode three, real life questions from real life people, um, and real life solutions that we hope everybody has one in this podcast, we touch some, I promise you, we touch something that affects every single person out there of nutrition. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what we're going to call this yet. Gray's the creative <laughs> one. She usually comes up with when we did you know, uh, fitness challenges. I'm like, what do you want to call it? Three days later, I'd get a random text at two o'clock in the afternoon. Be like, Boom, this is hitting me. I'm like, let's run with it. The juices are flowing. Yep. Um, We'll come up with a name of this podcast, something around um, real life examples uh, that everybody mm -hmm. can relate to, and we'll post it. Uh, thank you guys for the questions you asked. Uh, thank our clients for letting us at least talk about we, them. Yeah, talk about them. <laughs> um, uh, we'll hopefully have some of them on here too. Like yeah. they just they have really good stories that are really yes. really relatable. I don't um, think some of them realize. Like I've already mentioned to a few clients, I'm like, "Hey, would you be on a podcast?" They're like, "What?" Do you Why? think my story is, but I'm like, oh, honey, your story is millions of people out there. Oh, millions honey. of people out there. <laughs> I, right? I tell everybody that most of my clients have the same journey. It's just different obstacles that are going to be a little yeah. bit different, but the same emotion that you go through, the same things that you're learning. Everybody kind of goes through the same pattern. The person I want to bring on, um, I, I want to bring on, the one of the people I want to bring on, I want to bring on somebody who's ridiculous ridiculously busy like somebody who's like stupid busy like mm -hmm. has children a family two businesses work i know who you're talking about <laughs> Could, yeah you know I, that type of person right that type yeah. of person i want them to come on and be like how do you do it right mm -hmm. because everybody says i don't have the time and i'm too busy right let me bring on somebody i have multiple people and i'm sure you do that i want to bring on and be like all right Explain to us our your typical week. Yeah. Be like, hey, this is what I do. Man, it is a lot. What yeah. really, really, really busy people do. And I will argue the busiest people are normally the best at this once they find a group. The routine is so important. You find mm -hmm. a way to do it. When I look back on myself yeah. going through 
my childhood and, and growing up, I work best on a very rigid schedule. I've always mm-hmm. been that way. Once I can figure out my schedule and how it's working, I am going to get to everything because the busyness is something that helps. Yeah. I had a conversation with a high school student this week. Man, sometimes when you talk to these kids, you're like, wow, you're so you're so wise. When I was 17, 16, I was not that person. And she goes, um, in one week and in, in for for two months, she had 12 to 15 hours a week of play, play practice. Mm-hmm had ensemble in the morning and was playing a sport at the same time. Yeah. And she goes, you know, coach, every year when around playtime, my grades improve mm-hmm. around. Pl- That's the what my parents said. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why? She goes, because when I have 15 hours of play practice, softball practice, softball games and ensemble in the morning, mm-hmm. I have to learn to manage my time so well that mm-hmm. when I get a one hour break, it's homework, homework, study, getting it done. They yep. go, when I have idle time, like in the winter, my mm. kids struggle because she goes, because I, I procrastinate everything and I fill yep. my time with things that just are a waste. Doesn't so, matter. A hundred percent. I am ridiculously busy January and February for the play in March from all the things I have to do, but my grades improve every year. A hundred percent. That's how my and parents I, always, I was like, always busy because my parents were like you're a pain in my ass yeah, when yeah, you're yeah, out yeah. Busy. i yeah, need you yeah. to go do something like yeah. i had to play summer sports because my parents were like ain't no way you're sitting in this house all summer get out yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. all right so, i do gotta all right. go all right we'll uh we'll put it up and um we appreciate everybody thanks wait, for wait, listening wait, wait, being wait. here stop. stop recording with all due respect <laughs>